Hallelujah. As we get ready for all that God has in store for us tonight. Is someone ready tonight? Is someone ready tonight? Who is ready to become prosperous tonight? Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. Let's lift our hands tonight. And now we're going to pray in the spirit. The Bible declares that he that prayed in an unknown tongue give a thanks well. So let's give thanks well tonight by lifting our hands and praying in the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands where you are tonight. And let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Parande kofre palia kobrande la baya. Shele parak te kasis ge frambe la kambe la baha. Likrite seli kapalia kombre mande kalabrakteya. Zebe le ketele kaprande ketida halia. Kumbre mande kopridish. Likrate sele paramba kataya. Tonight is my night. Jimba kalia parande koprikelia. Repele ketele gende shele bende kele bangla. Rapala katalia koprinte le kabarande. Repale koparande kopremende kede. Sepa la kita la manande cobra naya. Rapa la katala compremante shida. Is someone praying tonight? Le cruz que pele que grande samba. Am papa rapa la katalia. Am prete que te le peredes. Le compen prente que te lia. Am prisca sala para te. Le que te, le que te, le que te. Se li copalia. Am papa recte le que prende. Repele que te le mende. In Bambali from Paradilia, in Semene Catalia, in Prata Sacatalia, in Paparande Capa, Le Comperenene, in Prisque Se, in Prisque Se, in Prisque Se, Repende Catalemane, in Bambara Palacatalia, in Rapele Caname, in Calemene Champele, in Prisque Sele Parana. Rimande kapalia kaba and pepres, pepres, pepres. Tonight is my night for a definite change of story. Tonight is my night of an encounter. Rapale kopele mende in kapelia marande sana aprata sakalaba. Is someone praying in the spirit tonight? Getting set, charging up yourselves, building up yourselves on your most holy. You belong right now, right now. Let's build up ourselves on our most holy faith as we pray in the Holy Ghost. Rapele ke la mania, ampa rapele ke ye ke teleme ne kavalia, apratalia kombe la bandeka, ipa rapele ke semene ne semene ne semene ne repele ke te akila para na. Salane, repele que teneme, ambele que rende, e compara ninja sana, a praktalia compele, repele me que tene, ambele me, ambele me, ambele me, ambele me, tonight is my night of an encounter, tonight is my night, repele que tene, ambele prende que lia, a praktalia, embele que tene, Semenande kopa, in priska libaranje, repele ke teleme, arabala katananja, pele ya ke te, semino kombele, repalia komba, aprakta sala, repele mene, empele ke telia, aprete ke, yemande komba rane, rabala kata, fix your eyes on Jesus, tonight, 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 tonight. Tonight is your night of encounter. Tonight is your night of a change of story. Tonight is your night. Repele ke tene, ambele ke telia, abrata kali amanda, ambara bele ke de, remande ke pali, in semenene, ambele ke lia. Jesus, tonight is my night. Jesus, tonight is my night. Someone that knows tonight is the night of definite encounters. Open your mouth and pray. Repala kanamani, empele ketelie, in semi di kaba, empara pala kata, abre ketelia, empara katalia, empara ketalia, abre keke, leko pere mani koma, ambra nanda kaba. Apreya que te lamene, sambene come, ambractalia ma, emperemene, embractalia, abractalia, mante se le me, ye que te lamene, manca carate, Jesus, 
Jesus. Tonight, my heart is ready. My heart is open to receive Jesus. Tonight, my heart is set for an encounter. Jesus, tonight, If you know you are one of them, now press it, press it. This is your night of encounter. Remande copelege, esebera telecompe, apratalia coprenia, empele que perende. Men like nations, a capere telia tenia, ampele menende neco, a sompende sambaya, a para teleme que tea, e peremende lea. Isadine, Isadine, embrace and Men like nations are rising tonight out of the house of Petra. Men like nations are pressing in the Madelia. Simanade, Simanade, Jesus tonight, 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 tonight. 
Emane kombera marandi ala kopenia Sampena ena sanya Mente sakamba na to Imprata nini kombe The same way Jacob wrestled with God In one night In one night In one moment Of encounter In one night In one night In one night This is your 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 night Someone is praying tonight From the depth of your heart Someone is pressing in now Knowing this is your day Your day of encounter This is your moment Your moment of encounter This is your hour This is your night This is your night Now press Now press Now press Now press Say Jesus Thou son of David Have mercy Tonight I receive My own prosperity Tonight I refuse to go I refuse to go The evidence The evident tokens Of the meeting tonight Shall be evident In my life From tonight From tonight As I return back As I return back Men and women will know Something has happened Something has happened Someone is praying now You are praying now You are praying now You are praying for yourself Stop looking around Close your eyes Open your mouth And press in tonight Press in tonight Say Jesus This is my night This is my night This is my night I refuse to go The same, the same, the same, the same I am touched by you I am chained tonight Repele ketene Ampele mandia komba Ampapara deaya Isha mandina kombe Aprasa kambele Roma kombe na makatala mandia Emangombele Repele kete Everyone connected Online, online Tonight, tonight, tonight The parate kopere mandia kopalia The light of the world hits every screen tonight. Ampera pelia kopanya, ampapara de shamandi kopele. Opres kele, opres kele, opres kele. Jesus, this is my night. Jesus, this is my night. In one more minute, now press it, press it, press it. In one minute now, repele ketelia. Jesus, this is my night of encounter. Now lift your voice. If you know it is your night, lift your voice. Say, Father, I thank you for tonight. I am saved by your word. One word from God changes my life forever tonight. Father, we give you praise. And we thank you for your sent word. Lord, we return the praise tonight. For you are making men and women prosperous across the globe by this meeting tonight. Our lives are changed forever. No one responds the same way they came. We give you all the praise. We thank you. Now give God praise and rejoice and say, Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Will somebody make a joyful noise? Now I wanted to command your soul to bless the Lord. Say my soul, bless the Lord. My soul, bless the Lord. Somebody make a joyful noise. Put those hands together, come on. Anybody excited to be in church this evening? Put those hands together, come on. Joyous celebration Joyous celebration Say, we're here to pray Oh, Ale. 
you for the many many things you do, for the blessings that you give, for the blessings that you give, for the life that you give, for the life that you give, for the many many things you do. Who's the 
something with my name on it. Are you sure about that? If you are, come on, give the Lord a shout. Now this one says, there is a blessing with my name on it. Are you ready to receive that blessing? Are you ready to receive? Come on.
protecting you like this. Protecting is all. Come on. I like the way you hold me.
to be in the house this evening. Give your neighbor a high five and say, welcome to your third day of increase. Glory to God. Let's have our seat in God's presence. Indeed, it has been, the past two days have been amazing, for lack of any better words. Amazing, amazing, amazing. God does wonders in the house of Petra. And tonight we'll be taking two testimonies. I'll read the testimony and then the media will help us. With the second. This is a testimony from Sister L.A. She says, God has been kind to me. In the month of March, God's servant, Pastor Ayo, declared that this is the month where mercy became our overwhelming advantage, rewriting our story. How many of us remember that word of prophecy? And there's something about the house of Petra and God's servants. Every word spoken in this house always comes to pass in the lives of the brethren. Who is a testimony to that? Yes, yes, I'm a living testimony. Praise God. So last month, Pastor said this, the month of March was our, was our month of mercy, and mercy became our overwhelming advantage in writing our story. And she says, I am into home interior design, and on the 1st of March, I received a call from a lady who wanted to remodel her home. We went over the details, the fabrics, the measurements, everything, and finalized on the materials, and I sent an invoice for payment. A few days later, she told me there were other people interested in this job. However, I was her preferred option to handle the job. The next day was Mercy and Miracle Sunday. Who remembers that service? Gosh, gosh, God does wonders in this house of Petra. See, the next day was our Mercy and Miracle Sunday. And I earnestly prayed to God for mercy on this job because I had not gotten a job this big. This is a lady that knows how to put the word to work. She prayed with the word of God that God had given forth in the house. It's our month of mercy. So she prayed that word. I hope someone is here this evening ready to take every word that comes forth this evening. She says she prayed to God and um, that same Sunday by 9 p.m. I got an alert. Glory to God. And when I called the woman, she said it was a deposit for the job. I was so happy. This is the first time I am getting an interior decoration job worth seven figures. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is somebody still seated? An interior design job. Glory to God. Seven figures. She says, I want to thank God for his mercies upon my life. I want to use this opportunity to encourage others like myself. Anyone seated here in the house this evening, God is set to do wonders. This is your night of increase. This is your night to receive God's word. And you must receive it with the same desperation, just as we see from this sister's life. She says, um, when you receive your testimony, share your testimony to celebrate God's goodness. Can somebody rise up on your feet and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's celebrate the Lord's doing in this life of our sister. Knowing that your bread is coming. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's have our seat in God's presence and keep our eyes on the screen. And I want to share with you today the story of how God totally transformed my life by joining Petra Christian Center. Before I joined Petra Christian Center, my life was marked with struggles and uncertainties. I was not sure about the future. Yes, I knew what God wanted me to do. I was not sure how to get there. I was not sure how to navigate the current terrain. I was just getting married and everything was just unsure for me. Petra Christian Center gave me a faith that I needed and a community. As soon as I entered through the doors, ah, oh, the warmth embrace, the smiles, the joy, the love totally got to me. As I immersed myself in the teachings and fellowship in Petra Christian Center, I could feel God changing every bit of my life. God's power extended beyond my personal spiritual life to my businesses and to my family. Everything changed. In November 2020, I woke up with a stroke and I thought, oh, there goes my dreams, my aspiration. And um, I lost it all. But then again and again, Pastor gave a word. And in three months, I was back on my feet. In one year, they could, the doctors could not believe the recovery. In three years, you cannot even tell that I, have, I ever had a stroke. I'm so grateful to God for his healing power. In 2020, Pastor had then declared that the year was the year where all other years would take a reference from. 2020, COVID showed up. 
And we thought that was it. Until around May, I told Pastor I wanted to start a real estate company. And then they prayed for me about it and every single thing changed from there. Between April and May of 2023, we had made the same amount of money we made in 2022. In 2023 alone, we started two new businesses. We started big boy partnerships. We became a consultant to the presidency. And then a whole new frontier of business just opened up for us. 2004, the year that Wisdom built, is truly the year of the seven dip. God has helped us so much this year. From the United Nations, to Commonwealth, to Education and Business Projects, everything has started to speak. The struggles and uncertainties have been replaced with deep gratitude and confidence in God's word and his ability to bring them to pass. My journey with God at Pretoria Christian Center has been nothing short of miraculous. Truly, I've experienced the tangibility of 2 Chronicles 2020. And I will encourage everybody, don't take God's word lightly in this house. War with them. Run with them. Thank you, Petra. Thank you so much, Pastor Ayo and Adiola Jani. I am very grateful. My life has changed completely. Completely, Petra. It has changed. Whose testimony is that my life has changed? Can I see your hand? Whose testimony would it be that my life changed at the prosperity convention? Can I see your hand again? Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated briefly. We're going to be praying in a few minutes. But I'd like to let you know that um, tonight is your night. Um, tonight is your night for an encounter. Praise God. You see, one of the things that... Um, um, no, that God does is sending his light. He says he sent forth his word and healed them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 10, I want to show us something. Um, we're going to pray, but I want you to observe something about a certain man that prayed about sight. Praise God. Even though it was physical, but there's a spiritual connotation to it. Praise God. In Mark chapter 10, verse 46, the Bible says they came to Jericho, and as he, went, as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, this was Jesus, and a great number of people. There was a man named blind, blind, Bartimaeus, who was blind, the son of Timaeus. He says, sat on the wayside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. He was crying out. You've not seen anybody cry out and is, I mean, their voice is not lifted up, right? Have you seen? There is an attitude to someone who is crying out, am I right? It was so evident that the Bible says, and what was he crying? He says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. M many charged him that he should hold his peace. Ah, take it easy. Your own is, do you understand? But there was a desperation. Jesus is passing by. My God, I want something. Praise God. Jesus is here tonight for you. But there is a hunger and a desperation that you must have. He began to cry. And then Jesus had to stand still. He commanded him to be called. And he says, and he asked him that, verse 51, he said, Jesus answered him and said, What would thou that I should do for you? What did he say? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. There is sight for you today. There is light that's coming your way today. And your prayer should be that God would grant you sight. You know, Papa told us from the first day of the conference that prosperity is about light. That's the foundation. It's about what? Light. It's not about what God is giving. What God gives is light. I want to be on your feet and I want you to lift up your voice with desperation, with hunger. Lord, that I might receive sight, light from you tonight. As your servant comes forth to declare the word, as your servant comes forth, open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. There will be download from heaven tonight. I want you to ask the Lord, begin to pray, begin to cry out with hunger with desperation. 
Job said I that by his light, it was by the light of God that was upon him that made him who he was. And he says, Lord, that which I know not, so thou me. Lift up your voice tonight. Begin to pray. Cry out. I want you to cry out with desperation. Lord, I ask for light. Send me your word tonight. Send me your word tonight. Your word on prosperity. On my prosperity. Send it to me tonight. E barosha kaparada galahaya. Lord, that I might receive sight. Leko parada shakabaya. Come and lift up your voice, people of God, tonight. You have a few minutes, but it's up to you how desperate, how hungry you are, how desperate you are. But tonight is your night. The third day is everybody's day. The third day is everybody's day. It says on the third day of the feast, he said, If any man tests, let him come. If any man tests, let him come. If any man tests, let him come. Is there anyone hungry? Is there anyone thirsty? Is there anyone that wants light? Come on, go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and begin to pray. Lord, send me light tonight. Saka parada barosa. Open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. Grant me an understanding heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm asking for the spirit of wisdom. I'm asking for the spirit of seeing and knowing. Zanga parada soke paya. Leko pariga saka parade. Zeka parada saka liade. Zebreka saka ta. La parade kala. Zala ka parada bolo sande. Leko pariga liade. Zaparaga la taya. Ingradosa. Landa ko parada dasa. Liko parade egede. Come on, lift up your voice, somebody. Lift up your voice, somebody. How desperate do you want it? How desperate do you want it? La sanga barada gale. Zeko bekele begede. Zanga barada gabalata. Emprako sanga labata. Zaka baraliate. Lord, that I may see tonight. Le caraba sanda labaros. La gabara de Iglesia, esa barada galabados, e caraba saga, liga barata cabalata, o precoposo, e precoroboto como, e caraba sangue 
thank you for light tonight. We receive your word. We receive your servant. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, you may be seated. is going to change. Tonight, everything about you is going to change. Now, look them eyeball to eyeball. Like Pastor would say, look them eyeball to eyeball. Say, are you ready? Are you ready? Now, take a response. Praise God. Put your hands together for Jesus. Please have your seats in the house of God. It's Prosperity Convention. Hallelujah. And God's word has been coming to us powerfully in the past two days. How many of us have been changed by the words that we have received in this house? Praise God. Sometimes I count myself so blessed to be able to hear these things. Praise God. Now, the first day we talked about, you know, how prosperity is a grace. And Pastor went on to talk to us more about, you know, the grace of prosperity. The fact that, you know, prosperity in the kingdom of God is not just a matter of labor. It's first a matter of grace. Praise God. It's not just a matter of labor. It's a matter of grace. It's a matter of light. And we received light that day. Praise God. And he said this to us that poverty steals your choice. How many of us remember that? Praise God. And I remember being in that service and I said to poverty, no more in the name of Jesus. I would have what I want. I would have what I choose. Hallelujah. And prosperity means that there is nothing you want that you cannot get. Hallelujah. How many of us like that? Praise God. And we ended the day by talking about um, that we are the seed of Abraham. How many of us remember? I'm just doing a quick recap for us by, before I exhort us as we receive the word from God's servants this evening. Praise God. So how many seed of Abraham do we have in the house? Hallelujah. And yesterday was so explosive. Pastor taught us the place of the Holy Spirit in our prosperity. Isn't that phenomenal? How that the Holy Spirit in your life is, is there to make you rich. Glory. He is there to make you rich. One of the major things that he has come to do for you is to lead you into your inheritance. And he told us about the most important thing, you know, about the Holy Spirit. One of the most important things is that he is the administrator of the will. He is the executor of the will. Amen. Praise God. Now let's turn our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. If you have your Bibles, let's turn there together. God is up to something tonight, and God is about to change your life forever. Prosperity is a matter of light. It's not a matter of struggle. It's not how much you work. It's not how hard you work. Are we saying you wouldn't work? No, I'm not saying that. But you have to understand that there is a light that must be on the inside of you that causes, that brings about prosperity. All right, you can work 10 jobs, you can work 20 jobs, you can work 30 jobs and have all the money, but be not be prosperous. Prosperity is the light in your heart. It's the light of God in your heart. Hallelujah. So tonight, Pastor is going to be speaking to us and I want you to open your heart to receive all that God has for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 says, But it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has he entered into the hearts of men, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Verse 10 talks about, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Hallelujah. The spirit searches all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. So tonight I want us to, we're still going to pray for ourselves tonight because you see, the, the matter of prosperity is not just about hearing a good word. It's not just about hearing a good sermon. Praise God. 
it's not just about hearing, you know, good homiletics and homiletics and, you know, exegesis of the word. That is good. But there is a heart connection. There is a catching by the spirit that you need to have. Praise God. It's not a head thing. It's a heart thing first. Hallelujah. So tonight we're going to be praying and what we are going to be praying is that the Spirit of God will cause you to see the things that God has revealed to you freely. Because I can tell you for free, if you see it, poverty is ended in your life. If you see the light, if you can see the light of God's word concerning your prosperity, I can tell you for free that poverty will be a thing of the past. You will never have to struggle one day of your life. And this message is not for those, you know, who are probably at the top. This message is for everybody. Wherever you are, you can be prosperous right now. Wherever you are, right now you can be prosperous. I'm reminded of the story while pastor was teaching yesterday. And I shared with a couple of people today that there was a widow woman, hallelujah, who had nothing. Her husband was dead and her sons were about to, you know, she had nothing. And she came in contact with this Holy Spirit through the prophet. And all she had was oil. She even had to borrow vessels. Do you remember that story? But one contact with God, in that instant, she didn't have a job. She didn't have anything. All she had was what? Oil. But one contact with the Lord. And in that moment, the oil started to flow. In that moment, prosperity came. Hallelujah. So it is not about, okay, I have to do this, do this, do that. Don't put yourself on the to-do list. Put yourself on the I need light list. Because when you have light, you will know what to do. A lot of us are running left, right, health, that skelter. What should I do? This business has failed. That has failed. This job, is it this person? Is it that person? And we are so bothered about what to do. But we never bother about having the light. The Bible says God has given these things to us freely freely but it can only be seen and received by the spirit it can only be seen and received by light the holy ghost deals in what light he doesn't have a card to give you he doesn't have money printed to give you but if you can get the light somebody say get the light if you can get the light if the light of God word, God's word can shine in your heart today and you can believe it and you can receive it I can guarantee you that poverty will be a thing of the past Amen. So this, this evening, I just want you to please rise upon your feet. But I want you to pray with passion in your heart. Because light is the most important thing. Light is the most important thing. You have not come here to hear a good teaching. You have come here to receive light. And you see, Pastor Ayo is not the custodian of light. It is the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost that will give you light. So if your heart is not prepared to meet with him, if your heart is not prepared to receive that light, brothers and sisters, you've come to waste your time. So we're spending extra time to pray this night and just to stir ourselves up, to say, Father, let your light shine upon my heart. Let me see the truth of your word tonight. If we do that, then we are investing more to get more from this service than just to sit down and hear a good teaching. Is somebody ready to pray? Somebody ready to pray? And why are we praying? Father, Father, let the light of your word shine upon my heart. I'm tired of this level. I'm tired of this level. I'm tired of not enough. I'm tired of never having choices. I'm tired of borrowing. I'm tired. Lord, shine your light upon my heart. Because one moment with you, one moment of light will change my life forever. Please, I want you to pray. I want you to pray from your heart. Because no man can give you the light. The Bible says it's the Holy Ghost that sheds this light abroad in our heart. The Bible says it's the Holy Ghost that reveals the things that are freely given unto you. Prosperity is your birthright in the kingdom. You are the seed of Abraham. But you need to see it. You need to see it. If you have a prayer language, begin to pray in other tongues. Because the Bible says, the man who prays in tongues, he edifies himself, he charges up himself, he builds up himself. Build up yourself to be able to receive. Come on, open your mouth and let's pray. We have a few more minutes. Open your mouth and let's pray. Where you are, scream light. Light.
light, light in the name of Jesus. Light, light in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Light, Father, shine upon my heart the light of your word concerning my prosperity. Don't bother about what you do. Bother about light. Light from heaven. Come on, you can pray a bit louder. Come on, you can make it a bit more passionate. Come on, come on. Aren't you tired of poverty? Aren't you tired of having, never having enough? Open your mouth and pray. Somebody shall light. Somebody shall light. Lord, I'm ready to receive your light. Come on, let's pray one more minute. Rakataya Basha Kotoya. Masakataya Bosha. I wish I could give you my light, but I can't. The Holy Ghost is the one that will share this light to us. Come on, pray. Pray. Makatola Brother Bosha Tayana Bosha. Someone say, My light has come. My light of prosperity has come. In the name of Jesus, my light of prosperity has come. In the name of Jesus, my light of prosperity has come. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Oh, Spirit of the living God, we ask you tonight. We ask, we ask that in the name of Jesus, you cause the light, the truth of your word, to shine forth in our hearts tonight in the name of Jesus. Let every man live with their own light. Let everyone live with their own truth. And truth from your word tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, our hearts are open. We receive your word with meekness, with joy tonight, and our lives are changed forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone put your hands together. Ask your neighbor, are you ready for light? Are you ready for light? Take a response. God bless you. Please have your seats in God's house. We love you, we'll never stop, can't live without you, Jesus, we love you, can't get enough, all oh, this is for you.
Come on, go ahead and give him praise and thank him. Worship him. Bless him. Give him praise and thank him. Give him praise and thank him. If you have a prayer language, go ahead and pray in the spirit. Go ahead and pray in the spirit if you have a prayer language. Just go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Spirit where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Spirit where you are. So much happens when we pray in the Spirit. So much happens.
Now unto the Lamb upon the throne we raise a sound. We raise a We raise. We raise. 
night everything changed. Tonight is the night everything changed. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for insight. Thank you for counsel. And thank you for the prophetic push. Thank you for the prophetic push. Thank you because the men and the women that entered are not the men and women living. Thank you. Thank you for a radical turnaround. Thank you for a radical change. Thank you for this is the seventh dip. Thank you. This is the seventh dip. This is the seventh dip. This is the seventh dip. Oh, this is the seventh dip. This is the day of the seventh dip. This is the time of the seventh dip. And as you come up out of this service, like Naaman, your life will be made fresh. None shall escape the Holy Spirit tonight. None shall escape the work of the Spirit here tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the executor of the wheel. You are the administrator of the inheritance. You are the governor of the kingdom. We yield to you tonight. Thank you. For you hold everyone by the hand. And lead them into the fullness of that which God has prepared for them. No one will live below their inheritance. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. Is anybody here tonight with all the hunger and all the thirst? Okay. You actually came. You actually came. Okay. So God has something special for you tonight. God has something special. You've honored the Lord. You actually honored the Lord. Um, Wednesday, Thursday were public holidays. I know many of you had to go to work today. This was not even planned. It's just yesterday night. And because you honored the Lord... May my God honor you. Very specially. Very specially. In ways and measures that will be obvious to all that God himself has smiled upon you. When you're telling your story, it will always be a matter of surprise to you. When you are telling your own story, when you are telling your own story, it would always be a wonder to you. When you are telling your own story, you will always be in awe of what the Lord has done. May the Lord himself honor you. May the Lord smile upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory. Come on, let's put those hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn to the person beside you and tell them, I'm glad you're here. Let's get rich together. <laughs> so that's your get rich buddy. All right. Because, hallelujah. It's important that you get comfortable with them because um, they're about to be real big. <laughs> Glory to God. You're, you're about to be real big. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed so far? Have you received anything from the Lord? Is that Christianness? Do you actually mean God has spoken to you? Do you believe that you are the seed of Abraham? How many of you know you have a covenant with God? And the Lord said, never will it be said 
that David, my servant, was more willing to show kindness to Mephibosheth for Jonathan's sake than I am willing to show you kindness for Jesus' sake. Those words are dynamite material in my spirit. I can never be broke one day of my life. Can never be poor, can never be broke. I can't be in want. Did you hear what I said? And I want you to talk that way. Did you hear what I said? I want you to talk that way from the light, the truth, and the revelation that you've received over the last two days. I can never be broke one day of my life. Oh, I want you to say it with confidence, with boldness. I can never be broke one day of my life. Never. Hallelujah. So this, I'm boxed up. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say it again, I'm boxed up. I'm boxed up. I'm boxed up. I'm boxed up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe it? All right. Sit down for a minute. And... Um, you're soon going to be standing, so let me allow you to sit for a bit. Some of you don't know you have changed already. Some of you are not aware that you have changed, but you have changed. Glory to God. So we said, God prospers us by the covenant, right? God's system to prosper us is the covenant. That's God's system. If you've not been around, you have to get day one and day two. That's about five hours of teaching put together. And I think that's enough material to deal with poverty forever. <laughs> Praise God. To blast it out of your life. And, um, but if you're here today, the beauty, the wonderful thing about God is whatever time you join, it's your beginning. All right. So <laughs> you can get everything today. Are you following what I'm saying here? Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Let me read that and start from there. Mr. Sound, can I come down? Is that fine? Hello, hello. Is that good? Thank you. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 11. God is good. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 11. There's so much we have to cover tonight, so um, I'd like us to stay together. It says, But the land which whither ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys. And I told you this is a type and a shadow of um, what Jesus has done for us today. Hallelujah. He says, It's a type and shadow of your inheritance. You're saved from Egypt, and then the angel of the Lord leads you by a pillar of cloud, a pillar of fire, and he's leading you where? To the land of promise, your inheritance. The Holy Spirit is that angel. The Holy Spirit is that angel that leads us into our inheritance. But he describes our inheritance. He says, it drinketh water of the rain of heaven. You remember that? And um, it says, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. You read verse 10, it gives us the description of Egypt, where they were coming from. Is that Egypt, go to verse 10, is not, it says, the land with that thou goest in to possess it is not as the land of Egypt from whence you came out, where you sowed your seed and watered it with thy foot as a garden of what? Habs. And I explained to you that's the irrigation system. Um, I hope some of you have gone to study some of these things between yesterday and today. Did you find anything beautiful? Did you find anything wonderful? It's important that you go back and study it. You're not studying it to check if he was right, to build on what is right. Are you getting what I'm saying? You know there are folks who want to go back and study to see, aha, let me be sure. Like a preacher who quoted something and then the folks came out with <laughs> Google and their, their, their studies to say the preacher is wrong with what he said. And I thought to myself, I said, sometimes people don't realize that the anointing does not require accuracy. 
sometimes if you don't realize it. <laughs> Glory to God. Just in that moment, God's Spirit wants to communicate something to you. And then you're all hung up on that. Somebody says, but the Berean Christians, they were more noble than the rest. They were not going to search if Paul was wrong. They were going to search to know for themselves what Paul had said. So the attitude matters. It matters. But you should go back and study it. Go check it for yourself. So the land was supplied by irrigation from the Nile. And um, that's what they were used to. That's what they were used to. That's what they were accustomed to. But God said, you're going to Canaan. Now, the interesting thing here is this. Please stay with me. I wasn't able to get this across to us yesterday. I'm hoping to just get all the things I couldn't get across and get the thing I should get across. Okay? Um, since there can be no day four, because I ain't going to go with a day four. <laughs> um, you know, Brother Higgins said that he said they would start meetings, a one-day meeting, two-day meetings, and it will run for three weeks. So they just start and they can't stop. They just keep teaching and the brethren are coming out just to soak, just to soak. I'm trusting God that those days and times are back. Yes. Where people are hungry for God's word more than anything else. He said three weeks and they'll run three sessions per day, morning, afternoon, night, morning, afternoon, night, morning, afternoon, night. The folks who were busy couldn't come in the morning and afternoon. Everybody showed up at night. And usually they just started out with two days meeting. Three days meeting. That's what usually was announced. This is a start. Rain conference might be seven days. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. So, um, <laughs> well, uh, I'm not sure I'm shouting glory to God for that. <laughs> you know, it's a beautiful thing when you're the one receiving, right? It's a beautiful thing. All you have to do is come with your buckets. What does he have to say again? And then you collect. Hallelujah. Now, I wanted to get this across to you. All the rain that Israel got in one year, please listen carefully to this. This is important. All the rain that Israel got in one year compared to the waters that were dredged from the Nile to Egypt was 30,000 times, let me put it this way, the waters dredged from the Nile to Egypt was 30,000 times more than all the rain Israel ever saw in a year. Are you still here? Which means when they dredged the Nile to get water into Egypt for their crops and all the rest, they got 30,000. How many thousand? Not 3,000. How many thousand? 30,000 more water in quotes than what Israel got by all the rain that they got in an entire year. Are you still here? So when God said that the land that you're going into will drink water from the rains of heaven and it will be far more productive than where you're coming from. They immediately understood this, that there will be less obvious effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They understood it. Because to get the waters in, you had to dredge. And every year, they had to keep the channels open. So as you were trying to keep the channels open, you were trying to get the water in, you were planting, you were doing all of that, and by the time you had a crop, you go, yep. <laughs> we worked real hard this year. And then the new year, you, you go, we go again. Have you heard people wake up on Monday and they go? <laughs> Tell them they're Egyptians. <laughs> they got it from Egypt. We go again. Confidence in the flesh. We go again. Where are my customers? Danjo <laughs> Mogbede. If you don't know what I just said. Close your eyes, get a pillow, and sleep off. <laughs> Glory to God. And so they said, you know, we go again every year. And they put in more effort. And they got some good results. But God said, just this little rain. 
doesn't have to be plenty. Just this little rain. You're not the one dredging. I'm the one sending the rain. And they would wonder, how come? What's the difference between myself and this person? The difference, the advantage is the Holy Spirit. Are you following what I'm saying here? So I said to you that the Holy Spirit is given to us to build up our spirits. He's given to us to edify us, to build up our spirits, to bring us into a place of maturity. But maturity is not for church. Maturity is for kingdom. Please listen to what I said. Maturity is not for church. The essence of maturity is not church. No. The essence of maturity is not church. The essence of maturity is to be able to take responsibility for the kingdom. So the Holy Spirit comes into our lives not just in a bid to help us speak in tongues and get excited about the things of God and all of that is included. You see, he does all of that for a reason. He does it for a reason. He does it for a reason. Because God needs sons to push his agenda. Are you following what I'm saying? He needs sons. Now, <laughs> I was sharing with the pastors yesterday night uh, when we're done, just having a call. I'm not sure if it was the pastors or my wife, I'm not sure. But I was just sharing with them. And I said, how many people, how many times do you see people in the occult world? What's the ideology of the folks in the occult world? They believe that their contact with the realm of the spirit should have an impact on their life and the works of their hands. Do you understand what I'm saying here? In essence, the measure of contact you have made is not how long you were in the shrine. It is the church and the believer who thinks that the Holy Ghost is a church thing, a church being. So we enjoy him in church and then we live our lives outside there. The Holy Ghost is given to you to make your life full. Full. Did you hear what I said? There's a lady under the sound of my voice. You were in a relationship for a long time. A long time. A long time. And um, it didn't work. And you're doing well for yourself. I don't know if you're in the auditorium or you're hearing me virtually. You're doing well for yourself. You're okay. You're good. And you have resorted to say, as long as I'm doing fine in my career and I have some good money, then this does not matter. Because you are reacting to what happened to you. The Lord said to tell you that you don't need to have one side alone. The Holy Spirit that is given to you is given to you to have a full life. A full life. Did you hear what I said? A full life. Which means to say, you're going to do so well in your career. You are, you, are, you are going to be one of the biggest voices out of Africa, out of Nigeria, to any part of the world. However, in just a few months, you'll be settled in a relationship that can only be from the Spirit of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Yep. And the Lord will establish you in a home of joy, of peace, Amen. of bliss Amen. that represents his kingdom. Hallelujah. Can we rejoice for that person and receive the word together? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the Holy Spirit is given to us to have a full life. Not just, you know, a little here, a little there. But what? A full life. Say with me, a full life. A full life, a full life. So we looked at scriptures yesterday that showed us about how that the Holy Ghost helps us become productive. When Adam was chased out of the garden, there's a, there's a part many theologians and many believers don't remember or think of. is the fact that the garden was the only place that was watered. It was the only place that was watered. As at the time, that was the only place that was watered, that the Bible tells us was watered. And so God said, he said, you will till the ground, the same thing you were doing in the garden. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? In essence, God was not saying he was going to do something new. It's exactly what you were doing in the garden. But because you are doing it in a place where the water does not reach, you will eat but from the sweat of your face. With painful toil, any increase in your life will be because something died in your body. That's what it is. But Solomon looked at it and he said in the book of Proverbs, haven't tasted it of God. He said, blessing of the Lord make it rich. Not added riches, make it rich. I'm going somewhere with this tonight. And then he says it adds no, the word sorrow there is painful toil. No painful toil. Somebody follow what I'm saying here? So when the Holy Ghost was given to us, he wasn't just given to us. By the way, I hope you know that the Holy Ghost was already, his ministry was from the Old Testament. And there was no church in the Old Testament. He's not a church spirit. He's not a church spirit. He's meant to be our advantage in the commercial, economic, and secular world. He's meant to be your advantage. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? He's meant to be our advantage. Okay. Galatians 3. We read it yesterday, right? Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Can we look at that text together? Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Quickly, Galatians 3. All right, let's read together. One to go. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that what? Hangeth on a tree. Next verse. Hold on, what's the blessing of Abraham? Justification by faith. If you want to stay within the theology of scriptures, justification by faith, the blessing of Abraham. What is it that our father Abraham has found pertaining to the flesh? Romans chapter 4. And then he tells us what he found. The fact that God is going to be reckoned to you not according to works, but by grace. Romans the fourth chapter shows us exactly what the blessing of Abraham really is. Now, but here's the mistake a lot of people make. They say the blessing, of, and they're right. You hear people who argue, they say, the blessing of Abraham is not material. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our blessings are not material. You were right all the while. We're blessed with all spiritual blessings. Where? In heaven places. Where? In Christ Jesus. But the mistake they make is this. There is nothing spiritual that does not have a natural parallel. You have to understand it. The reason there was a Moses tabernacle on earth was that there was a tabernacle in heaven. So when God said, build it according to the pattern, you don't, you don't talk of patterns save that there's something you're copying. And Paul's speaking about it. He says, Jesus had to go what? Sanctify, purge, purify the tabernacle that was in heaven. Are you following what I'm saying here? So when they say justification by faith, and the reason I, I'm going through all of this without just making assumptions is I know what you've heard. I know what you've read. They said the blessing of Abraham is not material. Don't let anybody deceive you. The only thing that matters is justification by faith. Can I tell you something? I think that's a lack of spiritual integrity to talk that way. If the shadow was that rich, which means what Abraham had in the shadow, the Bible says that he came up rich in cattle and, go and everything else. If he had it in the shadow, are you telling me that when I have the substance, then I lose what the man who had? Are you getting what I'm saying here? Yes, Which means we have what they do not. Hear this. Hear this. In the New Testament, we have what they did not have, and we have what they had. Yes. You have to think of it that way. We have what they did not have. They without us cannot be made what? Perfect. They without us cannot be made perfect. That's what the writer of Hebrews 11 chapter said. He said, these Old Testament folks, they without us cannot be made perfect. Yes, you know why they couldn't be made perfect? Because they did not have a Christ crucified for them. They all had it as a promissory note and they looked forward to the day when the Messiah was going to come. That's what Jesus said. He said, Abraham saw my day. Rejoice to see my day. He says, and he what? Saw it. What was Abraham looking at? He was looking at the cross. Oh, by the way, 
This will help you. You know, when God said to the man that I'll show you to sacrifice Isaac, I hope you know that the, there were five mountain ranges. It wasn't just one. So you have mountain range one, and then two, and then three. And theologians tell us that it was one of those mountain ranges that Jesus was crucified. Same place Isaac was offered. Exact same place. So he was pointing to the coming Messiah. <laughs> And to let you know that our redemption will not be by our works. It was not Isaac that was offered. God brought the sacrifice. We don't get redeemed by what we bring. Oh, you didn't get what I said. You didn't get what I said. You didn't get what I said. You know, so when I hear them folks talk about all of these things, I know what you're talking about. I can teach you to stupor. I know I've studied the material. I know what they mean when they're talking about it. I know. But you see, herein lies the problem. The, the idea that adding anything else makes us less spiritual. So they think, is it justification by faith? Is the blessing of Abraham? And that's all that matters. No, that's not all that matters. No. 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 We are justified by faith. We're made righteous. And that gives, it says, that we might receive. Do you see that? In essence, this justification is for something. That we might, what? We became righteous. Our spirits were recreated for a purpose. That we might receive who? The promise of the Spirit. Are you following this here? All right. Are you learning anything tonight? Go to Galatians very quickly. Mm -mm -mm. Chapter 4, verse 1. It says, now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differs nothing from what? A servant, though he be what? Lord of all. Now, you know many times we read Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 and we forget that. Go to chapter 3, the one we have been screaming about. You see that? Go to chapter 3. We just read verse 13, am I right? We just read verse 14, am I right? Go to verse 26 of chapter 3. And then we read chapter 3, verse 26, into chapter 4. So that when you read chapter 4, you read it in the light of the context. Are you still here? It says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither born nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Can you say Amen. amen. Verse 29, with a loud voice, want to go. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. And hears according to the promise. Then he tells us something about the hears. Chapter 4, verse 1. Your hears. That's a fact. He says, now I say. So me now. So this communication here is based on on the truth I just shared with you in the previous chapter. He says, now I say that the here, as long as he's a child, differs nothing from a servant, even though he might be on the bed of sickness. With, are you getting what I'm saying? He might be broke as broke is. He, are you getting what I'm saying here? He says, even right there on the bed of sickness, even right there as a pauper, he says he's Lord of all. Your circumstance never changes your identity. Never. Doesn't have that power. He says, he be Lord of all. Look at verse 3. Can I, can I have verse 2 there? 4 verse 2. Everybody read one to go. But it's on that tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Just hold on here. Now, uh, say that you are a skilled Bible scholar, uh, not necessarily a scholar, but um, studious with scriptures. Sometimes, because Paul was a lawyer, he, he will communicate two truths in one scripture. And if you're not careful, you might run off with one and miss the other. For example here, Paul started a conversation about us being here. So he's talking about the new, you begin to read chapter 4. You observe that he swings back into the law. And he's talking about how that Israel was under the law. And so it's easy for you to say, oh, he's referring to Israel. Are you still here? Let's read this together. It will help you. 
Let's do this study together. It will help you. Look at it. He says, but it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Next verse, verse 3. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Go on. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law. Go on. To redeem that that were under the law, that we might receive what? The adoption of sons. Go on. He says, and because you are sons. Now, he's communicating two things at the same time. He's trying to show you how that the law um, is now a thing of the past. He's trying to show you that the law was given as your tutor and your governor to keep you in check, to hold you till the time that the sun comes. And that's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, he shows us the growth trajectory of a believer. The question is, who are the tutors and the governors? Or who is the tutor? Who is the governor that raises the here from being a, a, a child to a son? Somebody get what I'm saying? Which means the here, as long as it's a child, different from no one else. Is that what God wants? No. What does he do? He brings him a tutor. He brings him a governor. Are you following what I'm saying here? And the essence of the tutor and the governor is to train you, bring you to a place of maturity where you are not dependent on someone hoping that something good will happen to you. Somebody get what I'm saying here? Hmm. So I said to you yesterday, I said that the Holy Ghost, the first assignment in his, uh, that the Holy Ghost has in your life, in this matter of your inheritance and your prosperity, is that he begins to reculture your mind. He begins to retrain you. Because everything starts from inside. Thought John verse 2. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, even as what? Your soul prospereth. Which means, no matter the prosperity we see on the external, it will be reduced to the level of your soul. Remember I told you about a well-watered soul. The garden there is the soul. We saw all those scriptures yesterday. So the Holy Spirit, number one, recultures your mind, gives you a new way of thinking. The first thing he does there is to help you prioritize the light over things. Hmm. Are you still here? So I know I am wealthy not because of what I can touch. I am wealthy because of what I have seen. And I gave you the example of John, the sixth chapter. You remember yesterday? Jesus said, hey, come on. Um, let's feed this multitude. Go get them bread. He says, go find where we could buy for them. Am I right? But the Bible never said Jesus knew how much he would pay. It said Jesus knew what he would do. He knew what he would do. He knew what he would do. So what was the ability of Jesus? Was it the amount in the account? You know, sometimes when we read it, we read it as though they didn't have enough money. He never said that. It never said that. The issue was supply. We always caught it as though they didn't have enough money. The Bible never insinuated that. The, the issue was there's nowhere to buy enough for these people. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Now, so did Jesus measure himself how much they had to buy or by what he knew to do. What he knew to do? Light. Does somebody get what I'm saying? Here? That's why you can be seated there right now and you don't even have the money to go home from this meeting, but you cannot see yourself as being broke. You see, that's the work the Holy Spirit wants to do. That's what he wants to do. That's really where wealth and prosperity in God's kingdom starts from. Are you following what I'm saying here? You don't have some money. Now you're afraid you're having tachycardia. <laughs> Your heart is beating faster than usual. All of a sudden, you have a fever. How many of you know what I'm saying here? You just wake up on Monday and you have a fever because of something that needs to be done by Tuesday. You have a fever. Can you be seated here and have a bill of 120 million to pay deadline Sunday 12 noon and be okay? Just be okay.
Well, until the angel came of the Lord, and Sarah heard with her own ears. And the moment she heard, in one year she had a baby. So much so that in the book of Hebrews, he tells us Abraham's faith walk and Sarah's faith walk. It tells us of Sarah. It says, who through faith received strength to conceive seed. All the while that Abraham was telling her there was no faith. Because faith does not come from reported speech. It's light. And when that happens, then the money begins to come. The opportunities begin to come. Are you following what I'm saying here? It's more like the problem is the teaching that the body has been given over the years. It's the teaching. Our focus has been material things. Hallelujah. All right. Are you still here tonight? He says, and he said unto them, take heed what you hear. With what? Now, tell the person beside you, take heed what you hear. <laughs> this is important. Some of you are hearing the things that are destroying your feet. Take heed what you hear. You're on social media from morning till night. Then you say you have light. And everything you read on social media helps you quench the little. That light, that is just lighter. <laughs> what you have is a lighter fire. <laughs> That's what you have. And then you carry your lighter. You know where you go? Linda Ikeji. You put it inside. Where else did they go? Naira land. You put it. <laughs> By the time you are done, even the diesel or the fuel inside the lighter, <laughs> it's gone. It's not lighting again. It's gone. You know all the news. Save your will. You know all the news. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. The appetite to be current has robbed many people from their prosperity and their inheritance. The appetite to know. Can I tell you something? You need to check in into a spiritual ICU. You know in the ICU, they disconnect you from the world. They create an atmosphere for you. It's a spiritual greenhouse. Some of you need to delete all those apps because you are working on something. <laughs> Glory to God. Hello, 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 hello. Are you still here? Yes, mm. So our focus is not what people can give us. That's why you're not angry because people did not help you. Somebody that was helping you before. No, you're not angry. Neither is everybody a plan. You know, you're just looking, you look around in the church. You know, You've learned how to gauge people. They tell you, this is your cell. This is where you live. You say, no. <laughs> you choose this cell you want to attend. You finish growth track. They tell you that this is the kind of department you should be a part of. When you go for the first departmental meeting, ah, ah, they can't help me here. <laughs> <laughs> and you justify it. You say, how can all of us be looking like this? <laughs> Put back my scripture, please. <laughs> All right. Put the scripture back. Good. Can we read together? One to go. And he said unto them, hold on. Guess what? I'm having a good life. You know, there are many people who don't enjoy their lives. They are not happy with their lives. They look at themselves and they are not happy. They are just very unhappy. It's, it's an amazing thing how happy, satisfied, excited I am with my life. I'm telling you the truth. It's a beautiful thing. It's just so beautiful. And I'm speaking to someone here because you're not happy with your life. You're just very unhappy with your life. You're just looking at me like this mouth is just sweet. It's just talking, talking, talking. <laughs> you want it to be bitter. Is that what you want? Thou shall soon. <laughs> no, but I'm happy with my life. I look at my kids and I just love them. I'm just like, dear God, thank you for blessing me with these wonderful, um, wonderful beans. <laughs> thank you. Because they are beans when they run around everywhere. Thank you. 
I look at my wife, I'm like, dear God, what else would I have wanted? I'm telling you, I have a good life. Good life. And you can have one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Glory to God. You're always regretting, always regretting. You have regretted who you married. You, the car you bought, you regretted the school. Your dad said, go to AU. You, you said, no, it's Unilag. You are regretting. You are always regretting. Even the shoe you bought, the soul has removed. Tonight is the end of that life. You, know what I <laughs> you are driving your car. As you are driving, you are eating. God now help you. It's one brother in church that bought it for you. <laughs> you are driving. Where is that? Where is he? Nonsense. Come and see the car you told me to buy. You're just angry with everybody. Angry. Even your wristwatch. Can you imagine the battery? The battery that just changed. Everything in this country is fake. And then one, one usher who's just trying to do her job. Here, welcome to. Go, 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 go. You can have a good life, oh. I can't. You have wrinkles at 30. 30. You call it dimple. It's a wrinkle. <laughs> hey, say, I have a full life. Now say this to me. Everything is working. Everything is working. Say, by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. Hey! Whoosh! Everything is working. My children are working. My health is working. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? My ministry is working. My marriage is working. Glory to God! I have a full life. <laughs> I have a full life. And guess what? It is by who? The Holy Ghost. Hmm. All right, sit down for a bit. He says, and he said unto them, take it what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that here shall more be given. Next verse. For he that hath to him shall be what? Given. And he that hath not, even the little he has, <laughs> will collect it from him. Now, let's read this scripture in the Amplified Classic. Verse um, 24 there in the Amplified Classic. Are you still here? Mark chapter 4. Okay, good, good. Can we read together? I want to go. And he said to them, be careful what you're hearing. Hold on. Be careful what? What you're hearing. Be careful what you're hearing. Don't say it has no impact on me. It does. Be careful what you're hearing. Look at the next thing he says. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge. So there are many who are hearing but they are not given thought and study. He says, because all of you are hearing. You came first day. You've come second day. Now, this is the third day. But he says, the difference will not be just first things first. Be careful what you hear. Make sure you're hearing the right thing. Make sure you're hearing the right thing. Why? Because your hearing determines your direction. Make sure you're hearing the right thing. But it's not enough to hear. He says, the measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? So the Holy Spirit will bring you into a meeting like this. Through the ministry of a teacher, he will bring you words. He's trying to read you your will. He's trying to bring light to you. Are you following what I'm saying here? But it says it's the measure of thought and study. So that tells me immediately that what Inkem will get is not what Emmanuel will get. They choose by themselves what they are going to get out of this. So I don't have to envy anybody. I don't have to envy, envy anybody. Now, but here's the thing. When we talk about thought and study, I gave you the example of how that I, I decided to wait on the Lord for seven days and just... And all dressed, and by the spirit, I just could tell there was someone who had said in her heart, even though a gentleman walked up to me and said, um, Pastor, yes, you said it was a lady, but it was me. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, what God says to one, he says to all. Could have just been anyone in the auditorium at the time. But, um, all right, the lady I spoke about earlier on the condition that we prayed for, make sure you reach out to me. Now, um, 
And so he said it was for me. I said, all right, that's fine. And I said to you, I said, if I only tell you that side of the story that I stayed on the, waited on the Lord for seven days and I got light from heaven, you may get unhappy with yourself because you've done three days before. You've set out, you know what I'm talking about. You've, you've waited on the Lord for five days and it seemed as though you didn't get anything. What you don't know is that you got something. Many times you're starting from the back. There are too many baggages and strongholds that the Holy Ghost is still trying to break before we even talk about light. Some of you grew up in environments where lack was the order of the day. You were cultured to think lack. It's impossible for you to see abundance. You are cultured and programmed to function in scarcity. Your creativity is at its peak. When is scarcity? That's how you grew up. So you say, I waited on Lord. I spent time. I decided to set outside time to study the scriptures. I took all the messages. Pastor preached at Prosperity Convention, but I don't think I heard anything. No, no. Nobody ever interacts with the word and goes back the same. There's a deposit in your spirit. Now, it was while I was talking with my wife that he dawned on me. I'd never heard anybody for then and after then who said what the Lord said to me. Never would it be said that David, my servant, was more willing to show Mephibosheth kindness um, for Jonathan's sake than I am to willing to show you kindness for Jesus. I'd never heard anybody say it before. Neither have I heard anybody say it after. It was clearly the, the word of the Lord to me. I was reading Gloria Copeland's book. I was reading the Bible, but I didn't hear anything from that. It wasn't anything that was there. And so I, I, it was while we were having a conversation, he turned on me. In the year 2000, I had saved some money. My mother would give me 50 naira per day at the time, and I had saved some of that money, and um, I'd give my tithes, and <laughs> there was Auntie Risika, I can't, Risika, I can't forget her, bonds, and then there was this man outside, um, I think it was Stacey's time or something like that. And I would save some money. I had saved enough to buy books. So I walked from my house, which was at between Paco and Water Bus Stop, um, Ipaja, Lagos. Just so you know. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I walked from my house to Rajioba, where Winner's Chapel was at the time. And all around the church were bookshops and everything where you could buy anything you wanted to buy. And so I remember, I didn't know the archbishop, but I'd heard of the archbishop. I'd heard Reverend Christian Akilume talk about him. I'd heard Bishop David Edoko talk about him. So I felt to myself, um, he must be somebody to listen to. If all those great folks are talking about him, let me get his material. So I, I got his tapes. These were the days of green tapes, not even whites. Do you get what I'm saying? I mean, green tapes and black tapes. These were those days. I got those tapes at the time. I mean, nothing like CD and all the rest. I got the tapes at the time. And um, I got back home. And I would listen and listen over and over to the archbishop. And I just thought to myself, whatever he said that made Oyedeko Oyedeko and Oyakilome who they are, maybe I'd get something from it as well. That was just the, I didn't know who he was. And then I remember this. Of all the tapes, the only tape I remember, only tape I remember, I bought a lot. The only tape I remember, and I can preach word for word to tell you how much I listened to it. I listened to it, the tape cuts, and you know you have to have some precision to use cello tape to put it back together. I cello taped it again, and I would listen over and over. I, I, and, and, I, and I was living in a, it was a two-bedroom, but it was a one-bedroom. You know, one, when it's not a room, it's a room. It's just R and O. Are you getting what I'm saying? And my room was the, was the parlor. That's where I slept, on a three-seater. That's where I slept. That's, and my dad would sleep in the room, and I was in the parlor. My brother was in school at the time. And that's where I would listen to the tapes in the middle of the night. My father would come outside and say, go to bed. All right, sir, I'll stop it. Then he goes back in. I continue playing my tapes. And by 6 a.m., I was taking a, a prayer walk on the streets with the, whatever I'd heard from the depth of the night. The only one I could remember was this tape by the archbishop. Your head is fit for a crown. I still remember the title of the tape. He had his feet for a crown. And he was talking about Mephibosheth. But the context in which he said it was Mephibosheth was lame in his feet. 
And that, you know, when David brought him to the table, the table covered his feet. And that, that, that table is the covenant of God. And I remember, I would walk on the street and say, my head is fit for a crown. It was just two days ago. It dawned on me that whilst the archbishop didn't say what God told me, a well, a seed had been planted 22 years prior. 21, 22 years prior. I had listened to a message that was only going to come to fruition in my life after two decades. Are you still here? <laughs> what if I didn't listen to it? What if? First things first, I won't be teaching you this. Because I won't have this light. What if I didn't set myself to seek the Lord in that place? Are you following what I'm saying here? And then when God saw that the opportunity was there to communicate his truth to me, he went into a well, something deep inside my heart. Can I tell you something? What you need, you already have. Always, always, listen to me, always, when the matter of material needs are spoken of in scripture, God always starts with what they already have. What do you have in your house? He didn't tell them to go look for wine. He said, what is in the environment? There is a bowl, there, there, there's, there, there's, there are buckets there, there's water, and he used what they had to give them what they needed, which means right here seated, you are a billionaire already. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? I need you to understand it. It is not something that's going to come from outside. No, no, no. We only have to create the atmosphere, the environment where the Holy Ghost can bring it out. That's what we have to do. Unfortunately, you have a generation who just wants sound bites. We want a clip. And then be able to say something nice and sound deeply spiritual, but not locking the doors to stay on the word for ourselves. Kingdom prosperity is not a blessing to be claimed. It's an inheritance to be seen. Understand this. You know, a lot of people have the idea that I'm going to receive my miracle of prosperity. It's not a miracle. It's not a miracle. Princes don't wait for miracles. They walk in inheritance. Are you still here? And as long as the church of Jesus Christ is at that need level, we are waiting for miracles, a miracle, an intervention, a, the touch from God. Whereas God wants you to rise up to your inheritance, you are joined here with Christ. The Holy Spirit wants to read you your will. Are you following what I'm saying here? He wants to show you what is yours. Till you come to a place where nothing looks like it on the outside, but inside you a well-watered garden. You cannot see yourself in the light of what is going on. You can't see yourself. In fact, you will have to train yourself so that you don't become obnoxious to people. Because they will speak in certain ways and something inside will revolt. Yes. But you have to train yourself so nobody starts looking at you as you yeah, are trying to push things on them. You know, when people speak lack, something inside gets angry on the inside of myself. I, I can't take it. My wife and I had to come to an agreement and we learned it from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. You're going to be the watch on my mouth. So don't get angry if I, if, if I don't like what you said. We don't speak lack here. We don't speak depth. We don't speak want. We don't speak scarcity. And our children know. Our children know it. Someone says, I like to say the things as they are. Continue. <laughs> are you not enjoying your life? Continue. As they are. Hmm. Say this, I have an inheritance. Say it again with me, I have an inheritance. Say this, the Holy Ghost is the executor of the will. Say this, I have an inheritance. With a loud voice, I want you to shout it, I can never be broke. Lift your right hand and say this, I do big things. Come on, say it again. I do big things. With a loud voice, I do big things. Yeah. Yeah. Light so much that it's impossible for, yourself, for you to see yourself in certain ways. Light so much. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. 
<laughs> Galatians chapter 2. I want to show you something there. Galatians chapter 2. <laughs> Aha. <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. I want to show you something in chapter 2. And then I'll show you something in chapter 3. It looks like Galatians is our book, right? <laughs> We're stuck here. And I planned this, so you might as well just go study Galatians and see your inheritance there. Galatians chapter 2, verse 1. Then 14 years after I went up to Jer again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Look at verse 2. And I went up by what? Revelation. How did he go up? By what? Revelation. How do we change? How do we change locations? How do we change? It's by revelation. We go up by revelation. It's by revelation. It's by light. And the thing with light is, it can be so real to you that what you're seeing with the physical eye becomes a lie. Chapter 3. Chapter 3, chapter 3, chapter 3. So when we say, I cannot be broke, it's not because... The account is full as at yet. Because that's not where you're going to start with. Many people think that. I'm, I'm just going to leave prosperity conference. And by tomorrow, by tomorrow, my God, my God. I'll just wake up like this. I'll just check my phone. 100 alerts. 100. I'll just be checking one by one. Wow. Wow. Woo. Woo. Hey. Mm. <laughs> he what? He what? He what? <laughs> In fact, let me announce to you that when light comes, it almost seems, almost, almost seems that things get worse. You know why? Before a woman is pregnant, she has control of her body. But the moment a baby is planted in that womb, all of a sudden, my back, hey, my head, hey. Now, is she in pains? Yes. Is, she, is there discomfort? Yes. But there are discomforts of joy. Pains of joy. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? In essence, once the seed of the word is planted, expect some discomfort. But get ready. A baby is about to be born. <laughs> yeah. My God. A baby is about to be born. You know, so, and this is the mistake. This is the mistake. Many believers, they get light from God. And then there's some discomfort. And then they throw away their light. They say, I thought God spoke to me. I thought God spoke to me. I thought. No, Satan will come to test what you have received. But you know what we are going to do? We are holding on to it with bulldog tenacity. Are you hearing this? Aya. We're holding on to it. Glory to God. Sit down for a bit. Sit down for a bit. Hallelujah. Are you getting anything? Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. I want you to see this. He says, all foolish Galatians. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Apostle Paul. Imagine I came here and said, all foolish Petralians. <laughs> you know, some of you just go, eh? Eh? It's because we are sitting down for prosperity confession. <laughs> you even hear people say, it's me that brought myself now. This is not me that brought myself. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, oh? I brought myself to, to, to wash me. Ha. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul said, oh, foolish. <laughs> you know, the thing here is this. You've got to understand that God will use you in spite of your personality. So you don't have to change your personality to look like somebody else. So you find somebody who is very, you know, charismatic, and you are just the calm and all the rest, and you think that God cannot use you that way. No, he will use the calm. Who use the charismatic, the introverted, the extroverted. All he needs is surrender. Now you get what I'm saying here. That's what he needs. You don't have to change yourself to fit with a mood somewhere. No, be you. Just be the good you. Because somebody is going to say, they say, I should be me. I like to abuse. <laughs> and say things as they are. I don't sugarcoat. I'm not diplomatic. I tell the truth. Tell the truth. You, 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 you should not be ushering. Can't you see how you look? <laughs> he says, oh foolish Galatians, who 
has bewitched you? Who has cast a spell upon you? These are strong words. He says that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth crucified amongst you. That's a lie. These are Galatians. They were not there when Jesus was crucified. They were not there. But the light that comes to you makes you as culpable as though you were there physically. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Which meant Paul could, he was justified to call them foolish. He was justified to say they have bewitched you because you have received the light. Uh -uh. How can you go to Harvard and be speaking rubbish? Did they follow you from your village? <laughs> Glory to God. Can I have the Passion Translation? I want you to see something here. Say with me, light. light. Do we have the Passion Translation? Let's get a bit passionate. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, Galatians 3, verse 1. All right. <laughs> it says, what has happened to you, Galatians, to be acting so foolish? You must have been under so... <laughs> I don't know which one is better, King James or Passion. <laughs> it says, didn't God open your eyes to see the meaning of Jesus' crucifixion? Wasn't he revealed to you as the crucified one? You see what he's saying here? You were not there when he was crucified. But revelation makes you as culpable, even much more. We hold you more responsible because your eyes have beheld the truth. Are you following what I'm saying? Here? So in the realm of the spirit, truth is higher than matter. Did you hear what I said? In the realm of the spirit, in the kingdom to which we belong, light is higher than matter. Matter is actually in the lowest level of existence in the realm of the spirit. Okay. Oh, dear. I, 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 was, I, I couldn't get into this in Ghana. Um, and I, I had no idea that I would even touch on this at all. But you have to understand that the realm of the spirit operates far above the realm of the physical. The highest manifestation of the realm of the physical is the lowest manifestation of the realm of the spirit. Did you hear what I said? Which means the highest manifestation that you can have in the physical realm, which is matter. That's the highest manifestation you can have in the physical realm. Matter. Something that has substance, that has space, occupies space, has volume and all the rest. That's the highest manifestation you can have in the physical realm. But in the realm of the spirit, that is the lowest manifestation you can have. Are you following what I'm saying here? So as it were, matter is where spirit bridges the earth. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Now, once you understand this, you know that God's priority is never to give matter. No, it's to give the word. It's the word that becomes flesh. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Mm. So prosperity is not a three-day conference and then somebody waves a magic wand over you without you having to walk with the Lord. No, it's not possible. You have to read the Bible for yourself. Yes, sir. You have to search. Yes, Light comes to you. All of a sudden, on the inside of yourself, you're so watered and you can't be subject to what you're going through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. You, Are you still here? Yes, Tell the person beside you, it's working. it's working. You may not see it yet, but it's working. It's Come on, tell the person it's working. it's working. Tell the person strongholds are coming down already. <laughs> tell the person it's working. It's working. Give it time. Give it time. It's working. The word works. It's working. It's working. It took 22 years for God to pull from that well. He's working. <laughs> it's working. Glory to God. Are you still here? Now, how does the Holy Ghost bring us into abundance? This covenant system, we said prosperity is not an answer to prayer. No. You know, I heard Bishop David Oko say this many years ago, and I thought to myself, I said, how do you ever say that? All I knew was to pray. Prosperity is not an answer to prayer. It's not a result of fasting. No. 
It is your revelation of your inheritance. It is you taking your place in the covenant. That's what the Holy Ghost wants to do. He wants to hold you by the hand and train you. He wants to show you how to walk in your part of the will, the inheritance. The Lord has a will for you. He does. And poverty is not inside. It's not a part of it. Now, what is the first thing he does? He shows you your rights in the covenant. That's the first thing the Holy Ghost does. That's what has been happening here over the last couple of days. He begins to show you what the covenant is. Begins to show you, oh, you have an inheritance. Am I right? Begins to show you you're joined here. That's the first thing the Holy Ghost does. He brings you what is called the good news. Did you ever read that he said they will preach the gospel to the poor? That's what the Holy Ghost does. He brings the gospel to the poor to let them know you don't have to be poor. You don't have to be broke. You're joined here with Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? You have a covenant in God. If human covenants cannot be disannulled, how much more the covenant we have in God? That's what the Holy Ghost does. That's the first thing. To think that he's going to prosper you by giving you a car is to miss the other. It's to miss the other. So the first thing he does is to grant you light, revelation, insight concerning the covenant and your inheritance. The strength of revelation you have about the covenant directly impacts on your prosperity. Are you following what I'm saying? The strength of revelation, the intensity of light that you have concerning your covenant with God directly impacts on your prosperity. Because there can be more light. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Which means what the Lord said to me in 2022, 21, 22, you'll find out at some point it's not enough. I need more. And I have to keep searching and studying. And the Holy Ghost will begin to show me, unveil to me, portions of the scripture. Are you following what I'm saying here? And like Jesus, I can say, I found where it was written concerning me. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Are you ready to take a bit more? Yes, sir. Number two, the Holy Spirit trains you in the way of worship. Hmm. Say that with me. What does the Holy Ghost do? Come and say it one more time. What does he do? He trains you in the way of worship. Remember where we started this conference from? I told you that there's a direct connection between worship and wealth. And I know many of us thought it was just, you know, lifting our hands and to thank God and to give God praise and we're happy and we sing beautiful songs to God. That's included, but that's just about 5%. Nobody can function in kingdom prosperity without understanding the way of worship. The Holy Spirit, when he shows you who you are in the covenant and what you have in the covenant, the inheritance and the rights that you have in Christ, the next thing he begins to do is that he begins to train you in the way of worship. And that's why Satan wanted to encounter him, to corrupt that. He says, bow down to me. And I will give you all the glories of this world. Do you remember that? He says, I'll give you all the glories of this world if you bow down to me. Worship me. I'll give you all the glories of this world. In essence, worship is an exchange. If you do this, I'll give you. Satan understood how the rem- Oh boy, are you still here tonight? <laughs> because you've got to get this. You have to get this. He understands how the realm of the spirit works. He says, you're bound to me. You see, all the glories, and I told you, you know, glory is there. It's not stratocumulus. <laughs> glory is there. It refers to the wealth, the finances, the economy of the world. And I told you, it will not be a temptation if it was not tempting. Okay? So it must have been true. It must have been true. Now, the converse to that is this. Satan is not an original. He's a copycat. So if he said that, it must mean he copied it from God's kingdom. The first time worship was used 
in scriptures, it was not used in the context of singing. <laughs> no. Are you still here tonight? Show me the way of worship. <laughs> I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost for just a few seconds because you've got to get this. You've got to get this. You don't understand why Satan fights certain things so bad in the church of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray. Just pray in the Holy Ghost for a bit. You, you have to get it. You have to get it. You have to get it. The way of worship. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Let's look at Genesis 22. And let's look at worship. Because that's what the Holy Ghost wants to do. He wants to train you in the way of worship. Genesis 22. And um, we can read from verse 1. We'll just um, run through it and pick up a few thoughts there. And it came to pass after this thing, God did tempt Abraham and said unto Abraham, he said, behold, here I am. And um, he said, take now thy son. Now, do you observe this? Thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll tell thee of. Verse 3. Can we read together? I would bless you if you read. One to go. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, cleaved the wood for the burnt offering, rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Next verse. Then on the third day, how many days? Come on, talk to me. It took three days. Say with me, the way of worship. The way of worship. The way of worship. I want to show you a mystery here. I want to show you why many believers do a lot of things and they don't get results. Hmm. He says, the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Everybody read verse 5. Want to go. And Abraham said unto his young men, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. This is the first time the word worship is used. Now, if you're a Bible student, you know the law of first mention. What you need to know about a subject is in the first place the Bible mentions it. The first mention of worship, there's no singing. There's no singing. There's no dancing. The first mention of worship that we see in scriptures is attached to seeds and sacrifice. You listen to what I'm saying here. That's the first mention of worship. Now, if you don't understand this, you will engage in God's system of sowing, but not get the results. You see that? What the Holy Ghost wants to do is to train you in the way of worship. Okay, hold this for me. Sit down. It will bless you if I explain it this way. Um, people say, and let me put it a simple way. I, I wanted to show you the way of worship before I gave you what you're used to, which means your right in the covenant is what he has done. Your responsibility is the way of worship. What is your responsibility? It is the principle of sowing and reaping, giving. Now, but it will do you more good if you understand it as worship. First and foremost, it will do you more good. You know why? If God says, come please, <clears throat> give an offering in this place or give a seed in this place, what he's saying is this. Give a part of your life, something that represents your life. Put it there on the altar. When we give an offering and we give a seed, it is not to have a breakthrough. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Here? You have to understand that the realm of the spirit is governed by sacrifice and seeds. The Holy Ghost has to train you in this. Or else you think you're dealing with MMM and commercial markets. And you lose sight of the depth of that spirituality. Which means I work 30 days in a month. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? And then I'm going home and the Lord says, I want you to give me 10,000 naira. That 10,000 naira is not naira. 
God does not have Naira to spend. He doesn't spend Naira. He doesn't need your Naira. He doesn't need your car. For example, I told you. No. But Isaac is the fruit of Abraham. Are you following what I'm saying here? What did God say? He said, now I know that thou fearest me. Which means there is an act. Are you telling me that God needed Abraham to do something to know if Abraham feared him? Are you telling me that God is limited to those actions? No. God is saying there is what you do that registers a certain way in the realm of the spirit. You follow what I'm saying here? Which means this is the fruit of your body. God is not asking you to kill yourself. No. No. To say you love him and you worship him, there can be no worship without sacrifice. Are you following what I'm saying? You have to understand that about the realm of the spirit. There can be no worship without sacrifice. So when the Lord says, oh, you're bringing that offering there, what you're literally doing is not giving God Naira. No. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. Do you remember when the widow woman came to give? What did God say? He said, she has given more. Do you think it was a percentage thing he was talking about? No. Because that's all her life represented. It wasn't percentage. This is all her life represents. All of her labors and her toiling, this is what it has come to. And she has brought that thing that represents her life to put it on the altar. Are you listening to what I'm saying? <laughs> That's why those in the occultic realm, they know you don't transact in the realm of the spirit without sacrifices. And they don't have a problem with it. They don't. They are willing to bring whatever they tell them to bring. It's the church that has a problem with it. You know why we have a problem with it? We have been taught that it's the way to get rich. We've been taught that our seed is the way to break the bone of poverty. We've been taught that our seed, we have not been taught that our given is our foremost worship. So he said, honor the Lord with your substance. I want you to observe the communication. Read Malachi that many people wrestle about. What was the issue with Malachi? Go study it. He said, if I be your master, where's my honor? It wasn't about material things. He's saying these material things are a representation of something deeper in the spirit. Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm. Somebody follow what I'm saying here? So, as the Holy Ghost begins to show you who you are, I have a covenant. I'm the seed of Abraham. I'm a son of oil. The next thing he begins to do is to what? Train you in the way of worship. You will find out that the Spirit of God will start asking you to do more than you think you can do. You don't have enough as at yet. Yet he will tell you, bring 70% of it. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, you came to church and somebody said, eh, $70 for 70 bl-. That's not what I'm talking about. No, a million times, no. He says he ministered seed to the sower. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Sit down for a bit. Where is my eye? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Show me the way of worship. So God does not need Naira. No, he needs a measure of your life. So, giving becomes that exchange platform 
Are you getting what I'm saying here? Philippians chapter 4. Glory, 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 glory. Can I tell you something? This is what we understand. Do. This is our secret too. Are you following what I'm saying here? I'm sh- Listen, I'm sharing with you our secrets. This is what we understand. This is what we practice that makes us look like magicians. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> Until the Holy Spirit can train you accurately in the way of worship, you will never know kingdom prosperity. Until. And I'm talking about in a private place, not that, I keep saying this, not that you came into church and then somebody said something and you became stirred up and you ran because of what they said. No, I'm talking about you are carrying something and it takes you three days. Abraham, for, do you know how long three days is? Just to do that, the fruit of his body. Philippians chapter 4. Are you still here? All right, verse 14. Glory, 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 glory. Say the way of worship. Come and say again, the way of worship. So your seed, your sacrifices is first and foremost what? Worship. There's an altar, and that altar must be kept filled. There's an altar. There's an altar. Look at what it says. And I want us all to read this together because it gives us how the realm of the spirit operates. Are you still in church? Mm. You realize that some of the givings many of you have done, he was was just MMM. They gave you target. They said, go and bring this amount. And you two, you you went, you went, and you went to bring it. And you you said, I put it on the altar. (laughs) That's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. This thing is a spiritual thing. He ministered seed. Okay. Are you still here tonight? Let's read this together. One to go. Notwithstanding, you have done well that you did communicate with my affliction. This is Paul speaking. They gave to him. Next verse. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning what? So what is he talking about? Giving and what? Receiving. Next verse. He says, but you only. All right, verse 16. For even in Thessalonica, he sent once and again unto my necessity. Next verse. Not because I desire a gift, but what you gave me physically, what happened to it? He says, it is fruit that may abound to what? Your account. What account? What account? Look at what's going on here. Now read verse 18. <laughs> I want you to open your mouth and read it. Okay. Uh huh. Who received them? The offering baskets, Paul, the church, the poor, the needy. Are you getting what I'm saying here? But verse 18a are all physical things. Look at the switch. Read the B portion. An odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice. Hold on. Hold on. So, uh, Apostle Paul, take this check for the work of the ministry. That's what they did. And they gave it to him. Paul said, Epaphroditus delivered your message. That's the physical part. He said, but in the realm of the spirit, it's an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable well-pleasing to God. So what they called money, God called sacrifice. Somebody follow what I'm saying? (laughs) Uh, I won't go deeper than this. There are are, are, are layers in this thing. (laughs) I think this is just fine. There are several layers in this thing. (laughs) Are you getting what I'm saying here? When you get a grasp of this, you see where our boldness and our confidence comes from. You see why I'm not afraid of anything. 
This is the reason I can tell you, if you like, give. If you like, don't give. And people will say, it looks like you people don't like money in this church. It's the reason why we would have projects I'm not, I'm not mentioning to you. It's the reason. You know why? Because nobody's giving is what makes me. It is my sacrifice that makes me. So let me tell you how this works. God tells me there's a project to be done. Let me show you practically. God tells me, I'm not talking about my needs in my life now. I'm saying there's a project to be done. Even for the church, there's a project to be done. Guess what I do? The first thing I do is to look for the sacrifice for that project. You are looking for the money for the project. That is you starting from the physical. Are you get what I'm saying here? But I am looking for the sacrifice for this project. So God, you've instructed that I should do this. What is the seed I'm to sow? Show me. I'm thinking. <laughs> but the other guy goes to God. Oh God, I need money for this thing. I need money for that. I need money for this. No, no, that's not what I'm doing. Koramande fela dosha. Redos. All right, so you close that account. Take the money there and sow it. And the moment I do that, I know I have... There's, there's a chain of reaction in the realm of the spirits that has been opened. And I don't have to look to no man when spirits are at work. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. If you understand what I'm sharing with you, you will never have to look to men. Because you'll be governing the earth from a higher realm. He'll be governing the earth from a higher, higher realm. Are you following this here? Yes, sir. That's why I take my offerings. I take my general givings. And I know that it's not money. It's sacrifice. And the value of sacrifice are the words that sense it. In essence, if you take the ram and put it on the altar and don't say anything to it, it's wasted. You have to talk to the ram. These are spiritual transactions. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. And my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. He will shall oh, Jehovah Jireh cares for me. For me, for me, Jehovah. <laughs> You've counted 500. 500. Jehovah Jireh, 200. Cares for me. Ah, there were two 200 in notes. Jehovah Jireh, 100. Yes, 50. My provider, his grace is sufficient for all me. Ah, for me, for me, for me. Then you drop it there. And then you do galala. Hey, my gosh, I supply my needs. According to you. And you're done. Do you think God is a beggar? Have you ever seen somebody carrying two eggs and palm oil with yam inside? And they're carrying it. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody come and see, come and see, come and see. No, in the middle of the night, middle of the night with a lot of reverence, a lot of fear and caution, they drop it at that place with fear and caution. It's only the believer that carries his sacrifice and says, it's how many they want. What a shame. What a shame. What, what a shame. shame. What, what a deluded, deluded people. people. Before, Before your, your money, money came, came the, the church prospered. Without, without your, your money, money, the church prospered. prospered. It's, it's not, not a money matter. matter. It's, it's a spirit matter. matter. Uh, all, right. all right, so, so help, help you with, with this. this. <laughs> uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter 6, chapter 8, eight pardon, pardon me. me. I, want I want to show you something, something very quickly. quickly. Are, Are you getting, getting anything tonight? tonight? And, and by, by the way, way I'm, I'm just, just getting, getting into, into what I really wanted, wanted to share with you. With you. Okay. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm telling, telling you the, the truth. truth. I'm actually I'm just getting, getting into it. it. It's, 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 it's not, not um, and, uh, but, but it's, it's well. well. It's, it's well. well. <laughs> it's well. <laughs> mm. Genesis, Genesis chapter 8, 8 verse 20. 20. How want to show you something there. there. This will bless, bless you. So, so you, you, you take, take that tithe. You're speaking to it. This this belongs, by, by the way, way the, the tithe is not, not a giving. It is, is, is a, a returning. returning. <laughs> you are returning, returning to, to him what belongs to him. From the, from the garden of Eden, Eden the, the principle of the tithe was there. God, God gives you everything, but there's what you must not touch. touch. From, from the, the garden. garden. From, from the, the garden. garden. 
from the garden. There's what you must not touch. Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> Look, Look at this here. Genesis, Genesis chapter, chapter 8, 8 verse 20. 20. And, and Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl. Let me show you something you may not have given attention to. Offered burnt offerings on the altar. Can I ask you a question? question? Was, Was there an abundance of, of animals in that ark? Talk to, to me. No, no there, there was, was no abundance. abundance. Two, 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 small, small, seven, seven. seven. That's, That's how we took them into the, the ark. They, they may have produced here and, here and there, but, but how, how much would they have produced for it to be so much? From, from that, that scarcity, scarcity. no one knew, knew that, that the, the way, way to multiply this thing. <laughs> Who was what I supposed to do? Keep, Keep everything. Let, Let him multiply. multiply. Then, then go and give you God, God what he can give you God. God. From the, the little that was in that ark there, there. no one took, took look, look at it. He, he built, built an altar to the Lord. Took of how many? many? Every. Say with me. Come and say with me. Come and say with me. Clean beast of every what? Clean fowl. Offered burnt offerings on the altar. What did he put on the altar? Animals. Verse 21. Read it. Read it. Use my mic. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cause the ground. What did anymore. God smell? Are you following what I'm saying here? Show me the way of worship. This is the second thing the Holy Ghost begins to do in your life. He uses worship to cure you of greed. He uses worship to cure you of materialism. Which means he will use the way of worship to cure that need that for things. This is important. The moment you begin to like something, he will ask for it. <laughs> he is not hack he, 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 you've not heard because you choose not to. <laughs> But if you know the Holy Ghost well enough, because he wants your affection to be on him, not on things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For I shall be the inheritance of Levi, not things. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Here? So God will use the way of worship to cure you of materialism, cure you of greed, cure you of covetousness. Because you realize that anything with you, you own it, but you don't own it. You own it, but he can demand for it at any time. How do I boast with what I'm not sure is here forever? How do I boast with it? You're driving the latest Range Rover. You're feeling like the biggest thing after sliced bread. <laughs> Glory to God. And you see, that therein lies the problem with a lot of believers because there are things they cannot give. There are things they can give. And that shows you the level of worship. The level of worship. He wants to train you till he delivers you from the hold of things. I stand here before God. There's nothing material that the Lord has blessed me with that I will think twice to give to the Lord. God being my witness. It's not a prayer point. Did I hear God well? No. No. I'd rather make a mistake trying to follow him. Than be right. In, are you getting what I'm saying here? <laughs> Show me the way of worship. There are many people who sing who are not worshiping. Many of our worship ministers, many. In the body of Christ, many of them. Many of them. You can tell. Because there's a purity that comes. Oh, there's a, there's a flow that comes when something had to go. There's a flow. Are you following what I'm saying here? The way of worship. The way of worship. Why? Because worship is how we negotiate the realm of the spirit. It's how we transact in the realm of the spirit. Worship is a vehicle to take us from place to place in the realm of the spirit. Are you following what I'm saying here? The way of worship. And sacrifices. Hallelujah. And you have to look into your life. 
You have to look into your life. And ask yourself, have I learned this way of worship? Or am I just a user? Have I learned this way of worship? Because God is not going to teach you the way of worship when there's fiscal abundance. It is from when there is scarcity. When there were just only two by two in the ark. That's when he will teach you the way of worship. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yeah. The way of worship. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you having a nice time? Yes, sir. You getting anything tonight? Yes, sir. Is God speaking to you? Yes, sir. Mm. Yep. You know the third thing that happens with the way of worship? He, he, he trains you in the way of worship. He uses the way of worship to deliver you from materialism and covetousness. He uses the way of worship to teach you faith. He uses the way of worship to teach you faith. What do I mean by that? Our seeds and our sacrifices are the faith response to our revelation of the covenant. Are you following what I'm saying here? Hello, hello, I need you to get it. Did you get what I said? Did you hear what I said? Okay, let me help you again. Your giving, your seeds and your sacrifices are your faith response to a revelation of what Christ has done. Which means, when faith comes to your heart on a subject, the Bible expects a corresponding action to it. Brother Hagin was on the sickbed and God said to him, he said, if people who are healed do not lie on the sickbed at this time, get up. If I believe that God has made me rich, what do rich people do? What do poor people do? They hold back. They hoard. They try to keep. What do rich people do? They disperse. My giving is not to be rich. No. My giving is my response to the realization that I'm rich. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? So, the number two thing the Holy Ghost does is that he trains you in the way of worship. He begins to train you on how to use your seeds and your sacrifices to negotiate and transact in the realm of the Spirit. Now, you send those seeds, those things with words. You speak to them. You speak into those things as they go forth. You don't just cast carelessly. You speak into them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you still here? I'll give you just one more. There are many more thoughts that I could give you. Number three, the third thing the Holy Ghost does for us. What's the number one? Let's, let's just run through it again so I know we're on the same page. Number one is he shows you your right in the covenant, right? He shows you who you are, what Christ has done for you, what is available to you, who you should be. You get angry with whatever Satan is putting on you. And you say, never again. And then number two, what does he do? He trains you in the way of worship. That's you taking responsibility in the covenant. It takes you in, trains you in the way of worship. Number three, he guides you into your wealthy place. The third thing the Holy Ghost does is that he guides you into your wealthy place. Now, Write this down and never forget it. Prosperity is tied to direction. Prosperity is tied to instructions. He guides you into your wealthy place. Now look at me, everybody. When we talk about the miracle of healing in scriptures, it can seem like magic. Say for a few cases where Jesus... And the prophets used material medium. For example, in one case, he took mud and he placed it. So you could say, oh, well, maybe the mud became an eye. Am I right? Okay. Or he said, dip yourself inside water. Isaiah said, take a fig and put it on the body. Is it plaster or was it? Or figs and put it on the boil. Now, but many times the miracles look like magic. Eyes be open and they are open. The ears are open. 
you almost cannot tell. It's just the power of God that goes into the bodies of the people and they are changed. But every time prosperity and provision is concerned, it is always an instruction. God never said, just go, everything will be fine. God never said, oil, your debts are paid. Amen. No, the woman said, the creditors have come to take. The two sons, did Elijah say, go back home now? They are going to forget that you are owing them. Come on, talk to me. What did Elijah say? What do you have in the house? Always it is tied to an obedience, to an instruction. So the Holy Spirit will guide you into your wealthy place. He said to the prophet, go to the brook called Cherith. I have commanded ravens to what? Feed you there. And then when the brook dried up, he said, I have commanded the widow to what? Sustain you. The wine finished. What did the woman say? Whatever he tells you to do, do it. And did he tell them to do something? Yes. In essence, if we're going to have wine, we must be hearing. We must be hearing. Are you following what I'm saying here? So the third thing the Holy Ghost does is that he guides you into your wealthy place. How does he execute the will? By instructions. By instructions. By instructions. <laughs> and you know what I found out? Worship makes you more open to instructions. <laughs> it's easier to obey the one you have given all to. It's way easier. Worship makes you open and ready to receive more instructions. Hallelujah. So, it's not a magic wand that... Overnight, I've shared this with us before, and I might share it again. One of those years, December that year, usually at the end of the year, this is my personal instruction from the Lord. I clear out everything I have in my accounts to give to the Lord as my first fruit for the year to say, I'm entering into a new year, Lord. Here's everything, and you can have it. And so I was just preparing my seed that 31st. I think it was 30th. I was preparing my seed because I knew what I was going to give. So I began to pray, and I'll speak to it. I'll speak to it. From the 30th to 29th, I'm praying over my seed because I want to settle my finances for the coming year, not waiting for anything to happen by chance. So I'm praying over it. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, I want to take you to a, a different pedestal. I said, okay, Lord. He said, I want you to give me such and such every weekend service. And he told me what to give. It was in foreign currency. And he said to me, this is very express instructions. He said, if you don't have it in foreign currency, this is the amount you give in Naira. Now, the amount he asked me to give in Naira was far more than if I had foreign currency, which means <laughs> if I changed foreign currency, the amount I was supposed to give in foreign currency to Naira, it was, it was less than if I was going to give Naira. So my race was to always get foreign currency. <laughs> Pastor Gideon is not here. I wish he were here. He, in fact, he got so used to it that by Saturday evening, by 2 p.m., Pastor Gideon is calling me, Pastor, um, the brew to change will close by 6. Do you want to change some money? And I used to be upset with him. Because you are not doing this. Why are, you, why, why are you the bother of my life? And God is my witness. There were times I waited till 5.30. Just hoping God would change his mind. Then I'll call him, are they still there? Are they still there? <laughs> and then I'll send him the money to change for me. And then my protocol will get the money from my bag and put it in the, in, in the envelope. You already know that. You don't have to know because he ministered at seat. He ministered at seat. So I was doing this every weekend. In that year, I missed two Sundays. I'm, I'm not sure, and I'm sharing this with you to let you know how this works. I'm not sure why I missed it. For some reason, I was just not able to get what God said I should give to him. Now, just to let you, to interest you, by December of that year, the Naira had lost value to the point that what God was asking me to give in Naira was the exact exchange rate by December of that year. You know what the Lord was trying to do? He wanted my sacrifice to be complete. 
So whether I was giving it in Naira in dollars, there was something he wanted. My wife would remember. And I was always given this thing. It was such a struggle for the first three, four months. My wife would remember. I'd, give, I'd, I'd stand up from this chair and I didn't know how to put fuel in my car going home. I preached fantastic messages. And you guys would go, wow, what a man of God who didn't have fuel to go home. Not because I was poor, but God demanded something. I have learned how to abound and how to be abased. God being my witness, I will walk from here, going to the back there, praying under my breath, speaking to the offering. You're coming back in the name of Jesus. Angels are on assignment. I receive the harvest of obedience in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I'll be saying those things as I was walking back there. And you were trying to hug me. You didn't know what I was going through. <laughs> I was going through a lot, a lot imposed by God. By March that year, three different folks came to me and said, God spoke to them to give me such and such amount every month. Guess what happened? The amount God told me to give him per week. Three people were giving me per month. So now I had three weeks covered. So every time they came to see me, in my mind, <laughs> and they gave me the envelope. I'm like, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now my Naira can rest. And I had just one month to argument with. Now, I'm trying to show you how prosperity works. You are there. I say, in the name of Jesus, I receive it. And make what a naked parata, angel. Aren't you hearing? Go! No transaction whatsoever. <laughs> no transaction. But I was transacting. You didn't know. We're all having fun. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. God was smelling something somewhere. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Now I could give three weeks. It's amazing. I, when I told my wife, she was shocked. The exact amount God told me to give was what God told them to give me once a month. I had three weeks to give in the foreign currency. Before the year was over, I was far richer in foreign currency than in Naira. Inexplicably so. Guess what? The biggest seed I'd ever given to God in foreign currency was that same year. By the time I was taking stock and I thought like, see what the Lord has done. Then God says, I was, we're in a prayer meeting with two of our friends, husband and wife. This was in a lorry. And we're praying together. And as we're praying, after about an hour, the Lord spoke to me. He said, now you're going to give <laughs> the biggest seed you've given in your life. I said, here we go again. And I said, Lord, where? He said, to Petra. I said, oh, wow, that's beautiful. I thought he was going to mention. He said to Petra, you're going to get you to church. I said, that's beautiful. I'm, I'm glad to do that. But I said, where am I going to find this amount? You remember that's what we said. Where am I going to find this amount? The Lord said, you have it with you. I said, where? Where? He was, he was big at the time. Mark my words, at the time. He was really big. He was really big. I thought I was going to break the bank to be able to do it. And can guess what? As I scooped everything from everywhere, it was complete. I remember the day I called Pastor Gideon. I said, get ready. <laughs> I had my seed ready. I said, you guys go bank it now. No. I wanted to hear they banked it. Then I go to God. Yeah. <laughs> Sacrifice. Now let's talk. <laughs> I, I, I was waiting for that to happen. When he told me it's in the account, I said, yes. Yes, a new level is here. Glory to God. You see, all of these are transactions. You don't have to know. I didn't need a preacher to come and tell me, and thousand dollar for one thousand blessing. You are a crook. You're a spiritual crook if you need that. It's the way of worship. You follow what I'm saying here? The way of worship. I, I, I did not have Naira enough that I always had to borrow Naira from her. She didn't like it. She always said I didn't give her money back. But I gave her foreign currency. Isn't that a better deal? Yes, Glory to God. So you think things happen by chance? No. He will guide you into your wealthy place. He will tell you, shut down this side of the business and do this. 
He'll tell you, you are wrong. You're in the wrong industry. Move to this place. He'll tell you, do this, do that. He will give you instructions. In those instructions lie your harvest. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Are you still here tonight? <laughs> hmm. Say this with me, I can never be broke. Say this, I am submitted to the Holy Spirit. His instructions and directives are rule and law in my life. No arguments, none whatsoever. I am submitted completely to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The administrator of the inheritance. I have like one, two, about five more points to give you. But if you do this, you, you're rich already. If you do what I've just shared with you, you're rich. Pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pray in the Holy Spirit where you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yep, 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 yep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come and worship the governor of the kingdom, the administrator of our inheritance, the executor of the will. Give him praise and thank him. Give him glory where you are. Thank him. Worship him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give him praise and thank him. Bless him. Bless him. Worship him. Give him praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. The Lord has started a work in your heart and in your life. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank him. Worship him. Bless him. Give him praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you. We bless you. Close your eyes, lift your hands, and just bless him where you are. Give him praise. The word you have received. The Lord has spoken to your heart. Give him praise and thank him. Give him praise and thank him. Bless him. Bless him. Rise up on your feet and bless him. Rise up on your feet and bless him. Rise up on your feet and bless him. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, blessed be God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Get your seeds and your offerings. What did you come here with? Let's make a practice. Let's make a practice tonight. What did you come here with to give to the Lord? Thank you, Lord. You see that that thing in your hand is not ordinary. Yep. It's not ordinary. Now go ahead and pray in the spirit. God does not spend our currency. He does not need he doesn't need distance. The cattle on the thousand hills belongs to him. This is a spiritual transaction. I want you to understand how these things work. I want you to understand it. It says it's a sweet smelling savor unto the Lord. God smells it and God responds to it. God smells it and God responds to it. Thank you, Lord. 
Now show me, Heavenly Father, tonight I bring my seed, my sacrifice to worship you. This is a mark of my honor for you, dear Lord Jesus. Tonight I call in abundance. Seed, go forth and cause a harvest to come in. Seed, go forth and cause abundance to come in. Seed, go forth and cause increase to come in. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare the days of lack and of want are now over. I live in the overflow in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Before you give that seed, how many of you believe it is a sacrifice? You're making a transfer. You're giving an offering. You have five nera there. That's what you have. You have 10 million there. That's what you have. You have 10 naira there. That's what you have. God does not spend currency. It's the way of worship. And you give it with faith in your heart, knowing that there's a response in the realm of the Spirit. Go ahead and cast. what the Lord said to me of prosperity he said they are angels of prosperity I was just about 15 years of age he said and those angels will function with you he said they will work with you it was years after I began to understand what the Lord was saying this afternoon as I prayed and got ready for the He said, tonight, of increase, of abundance, of overflow. Let them minister to you now. Let them cause the inheritance to come in. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. There's such an anointing of the Holy Ghost here tonight. There's such an anointing of the Holy Ghost here tonight. Yes. These angels will go forth and they will cause you to come into favor. You will find favor with the high and the mighty. 
Oh, men will say there's something you are using. They will say there's something different about you. You will know it's the angel of the Lord that has gone ahead of you. Stretch your two hands out right now. Everything you do shall prosper. Nothing will die in these hands again. Nothing will ever die in these hands again. In the name of Jesus. Pray in the Holy Ghost for a second. Pray in the Holy Ghost for a second. Oh, I would to God that your eyes were open to see what's happening in the realm of the Spirit. Garment, garments are being changed. I'm seeing garments of lack, of grief. Garments of poverty. You are taking on your garments of royalty. You are taking on your garments of royalty. You are taking on your garments of royalty. Yes, yes. Angels, expand their businesses. Angels, expand the works of their hands. Angels, take their thoughts, their ideas, their visions, their businesses far, far and wide, beyond where their legs can take them. Take it into the nations now. Raise help us for them now. Raise favor for them now. Oh, Lero Tanango Skila Antoradigo Shalamanta Kabaya. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Three instructions. Number one, fight every thought of smallness, of lack, of want. Fight every such thought. You must cast it down. Every time it arises, you must cast it down. Number two, obey the instructions of the Lord. Whatever he tells you to do, no matter how difficult they seem, do them. Not the instructions of just a man. The instructions of the Lord. Now, God can use a man to instruct you. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying that so God will not outsource guiding you to another man. He will not. You have the Holy Spirit on the inside of yourself. Whatever instructions he gives you to do, make sure you obey him. Make sure you obey him. Make sure you obey him. The third one is this. For those of you, young people, I sat in my office and the Lord said to me, he said, how fortunate. It was the Lord that said to me, he said, how fortunate. You make the most of it. This is the time. For those of you in your 20s, make the most of it. One of our pastors was telling me, he said, I preached a message at Ugbomosho some weeks back, some months back. He said he has listened to it eight times. Go back, lock yourself up. This is the time to catch the light when there are yet fewer responsibilities, this is the time to catch the light. Glory to God. Congratulations. Did you hear what I said? Congratulations. And I do not say that religiously. I say that because as I prayed for you tonight, I heard the Holy Spirit say, it's done. It's done. I can go to bed now and sleep a complete night knowing it's done. Yes. Yes. The burden that I had, oh, them your own branded goods. I don't know what it is, but your own branded goods, selling them, 
your own branded goods. And I'm hearing conversations where people are saying, this actually is better than what we bring in from the Western world. That's what I'm hearing them say. Bologna's in dollars. The Bologna's in Naira. Come on, shout hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And what would, do we say to Papa? Can we shout a And um, I want to encourage everyone to, to go back to the messages and listen to it. Feed your spirit on it. Get instructed and get more light. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I got good news for us. <laughs> this Sunday... It's Super Sunday. Glory to God. I thought you would be screaming louder than this. Amen. We're going to be having Super Sunday with God.